All right. Hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Nicholas Vandenberg, who is actually he's in LA today, uh, spends a lot of time on the East Coast as well. But today he's in, joining me from LA and he's the co founder and CEO, CEO of Chili Piper, which helps your buyers convert. And today, what we want to talk about uh, with Nicholas is the overlooked sales skill and perhaps maybe even the most important sales skill and that is empathy. So Nicholas, uh, why do you think empathy is so important and is it more important today than it ever was or is, has it always been this important? Um, so th that's actually a, a very uh, important skill that uh, most people confuse. So let me um, give you a bit of information about how uh, the research I've done. I, I've worked in um, sales all, all my life and I've observed a lot of different profiles uh, being successful in sales. When I, I came to the US actually in 1993 and I met Steve Jobs and, uh, and everybody said, wow, he's the best salesman that people have ever, ever seen. And um, then I found out some things about Steve Jobs personal uh, life um, and things that are not so nice and mm -hmm. and also how you handle these employees, call them assholes and other nicknames of this nature. And then I think, well, that seems odd because this guy doesn't seem very empathetic, right? Mm -hmm. So, and yet you understand, you know that in sales, there's something about reading the other person that is critical. Mm -hmm. So I had a bit of a breakthrough on the topic. Um, very recently, uh, 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 about a year ago, when um, I was attending a seminar in uh, neuroeconomics. So neuroeconomics is a, is a new discipline at the junction of neuroscience and economics. Mm -hmm. It was started by a guy called uh, Paul Glincher at uh, NYU. Um, and he um, built this uh, um, new discipline trying to understand um, how people make decisions based on neuroscience. And one of the discoveries was that uh, what people in our world of sales refer to empathy is actually a different talent. So it's actually something called uh, mentalizing your theory of mind. Um, mentalizing your theory of mind. Me, no, it's, it, it has two names, probably because it's so new that they haven't decided on the name yet. You know, it's like when... when they haven't got a catchy uh, name for it. Yes, 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 <laughs> exactly. When you build your category, and you're not sure yeah. what to call a category. Uh, so the, 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 probably the, the name that is more commonly used is theory of mind. And uh, the idea is that uh, empathy is... Um, best described by contagion. So you, you see somebody happy, you become mm. happy. You see somebody sad, you become sad. So you, there's contagion between the other person's feelings and your feeling. It turns out that um, it's, it's a very pleasant thing to feel for the other person, uh, but it's not necessarily what's really critical in sales. Mm -hmm. What's critical in sales is the ability to understand the other person's motivations, the other person's emotions, and actually act on it. And that is what theory of mind is all about, is, is this ability to read the mind. And it turns out that the two are completely different. And what the breakthrough that, 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 that uh, neuroscience came up with is to discover that there are two different uh, brain circuits. Mm. So they actually put people in the big machine in the MRI and looked at how people uh, go through the theory of mind and then how people empathize. And they found that it's two different uh, yeah. parts of the brain that are activated. I think in sales, it's fine if we continue, continue calling it empathy, you know, because the category hasn't been called yet. But sure. it's, it's actually important to understand that uh, in the world of sales, it's not about feeling joyful when somebody is joyful or sad when somebody is sad. Actually, mm -hmm. that's could be counterproductive, right, uh, John? Sure. Because if you're talking to a prospect who's in a bad mood, the last thing you want to do yeah, is yeah, exactly. in a bad mood yourself. <laughs> and they were like, you know what, it's just having a bad day. Let's, let's, close, that, let's close that conversation. I'm not going to sell you my shit. Either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, you know, and then, then it, it, it all puts the pieces together because you look at Steve Jobs and, it, yes, it doesn't... It doesn't empathize with people, but he reads mm. people's uh, right. motivations uh, incredibly well. He understands what, 
how people are going to choose what they're going to choose, what they're going to be excited about, not excited about, um, and and able to to move massive markets with that uh, talent. Yeah, and one thing that people often confuse uh, Nicholas is empathy with sympathy, right? You know, they think that empathizing is the same as sympathizing when it's it's not, right? Uh, because you can empathize and you can get inside, as you say, the mind of the buyer, but you can still deliver, you know, uh, you can still deliver, you know, challenges to them or or whatever. You don't have to like just jump over and be like beside them, right? You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And 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 uh, um, there's actually a, a great book that you may have read already called "Never Split the Difference." Have you seen this one? No, uh, I haven't seen that. All right, no, it's, no, a, it's a that. fantastic book, book by 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 an ex FBI uh, hostage negotiator. Ah. And um, and is recommendation is to use what he calls tactical empathy which mm. and probably if you go with the uh, sympathy the idea of contagion then the last thing you want is to have a contagious of emotion with your with your hostage taker right 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 uh, but that, so, so he used it much more in the sense of the theory of mind that i've mentioned before he used it, tactical empathy is this ability to read the other person's emotions to respect the other person's emotions. And what's tactical about it is that you're actually using them to lead the conversation towards where you want mm -hmm. to go. And, and that's very much what we're supposed to do in sales. I mean, obviously in sales we have to uh, be genuine. Uh, we, we uh, at the end of the day, we're going to uh, provide value for the other person. So we're not going to try to get them where they don't want to go. But for sure, we, uh, need to read the other person's emotions and motivation and, and have this uh, tactical empathy that neuroscientists now call theory of mind um, that, mm -hmm. that is going to uh, get everybody where, where we want to be. And to do that, obviously, then you have to get out of your own head a little bit and uh, you know, really focus on, the, uh, focus on the other person, right? And, and really try to understand what's what's going on and i think sometimes there is you know people will say oh yeah i'm really customer focused or i really try to understand or i ask lots of questions but they never really get out of their own head right because they're still kind of thinking about what i'm going to do next you're exactly right and it's actually a very difficult discipline to acquire because we because we're human beings right we have reactions when some, mm -hmm. I, I have it all the time with my team where you know, it goes, some prospect get frustrated and they'll throw something mean and, you know, they'll say, oh my God, that guy is such an ahem, right? And they say, yeah. we don't have ahem prospects. <laughs> <laughs> we only have prospects who have goals and it's our job to help them and uh, not to uh, get offensive or, yeah. or, or, or hostile. Uh, and it, it does take a lot of... Uh, work to be able to achieve that, right? There's this kind of a zen aspect to, uh, to, mm -hmm. to, to the regime interactions with our customers, yeah. And I think sometimes we forget, right? I mean, we're all customers and prospects ourselves, right? For other people and for other things. And sometimes we forget that, that we come in the door and we put on a sales hat and suddenly we forget what it's like to be a prospect or a customer. And, uh, you know, so we start, as you say, you start saying, oh, well, that, that prospect is a uh, prospect, right? <laughs> um, instead of going, well, I wonder really what's going on there, because let's face it, if it's, a, if it's a B2B buying decision, you know, there's a lot of pressure on somebody when they're doing that. You know, it can be career enhancing or it can be career limiting, depending on whether they make the right decision. So maybe their boss is pressuring them. Who knows? Maybe there's a whole committee and they can't make an agreement. There may be a lot of stuff going on. And it's our job to dig in and really find out what's prompting them to manifest in the way that they are. You're very right. There's often a lot of stress around the purchasing decision uh, that they want it, but they don't get the budget or somebody's mm -hmm. against it and they have to work the politics. And uh, or, or they've been, uh, it happened to me um, yesterday, I was on a sales call and, and, and the company had been burned by, by, by another vendor, right? right? And so they we're obviously very nervous uh, and you know it feels 
wrong from my perspective is that they, they would, you know, it's almost like they didn't believe us. And you think, well, mm -hmm. look, we, we're being truthful. But when you've been burned by another vendor, you, you, it's, you, it's forgivable to think that every vendor uh, is, <laughs> is out there to, yeah. to tell you lies, you know. So you're absolutely right. There's often a lot of stress on the other side, and we have to be uh, aware of that. So how can, so somebody watching or listening to this, right, maybe they would say, okay, well, being empathetic is, that's, you you either inherently have that or you don't, but can you actually become more empathetic? Can you become more, uh, uh, as you say, like, you know, more mind-focused or mindful? Um, is that something you can actually teach yourself to do? I think so. I think you can teach yourself. I think the first step is what you said earlier is to control your emotions, right? So it's, it's mm -hmm. to, it's to not react, uh, to, to the negative things. And, and, uh, what I found very useful, obviously there are techniques like meditation and things to be mm -hmm. able to bring back your, your, uh, body and, and, and mind to a, a level of steadiness that is required, but that, that takes long practice. But I, I found a simple trick that does marble. It's this, uh, um, simple principles of goodwill, which is I only want the best for the other. So at any time I start a conversation, or that, remind me I only want the best for the other, right? And so when you when you it's, the conversation started, you, if you constantly remind yourself I only want the best for that person, um, then you will not call him an asshole because <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> it's not the best for the person. It, 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 it's a very simple trick that, that uh, works very effectively um, and it works uh, in other situations too uh, because at the end of the day, it doesn't, if things go badly for another person, that doesn't help me, right? So, mm -hmm. so it's a very easy uh, principle to endorse, to say, look, whatever happens, I, I just want the best for them. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm finding that that, that that reminding myself of, the, of that principle uh, helps in, in uh, um, dropping any negative emotions. And as a result, it helps focusing on, on the emotion of the other person. Because you, you're like, you think, okay, what, what is going on there? Since I only want the best. Like you were saying, somebody is stressed. They said, look, I only want the best for them. Then you think, why is this person stressed? Right? And, yeah. that, and that helps... Uh, uh, yeah, and then that helps you because then you can actually maybe go on a bit of a discovery of finding out what are the issues behind the scenes that you don't know about that's uh, contributing. And also just to that point uh, uh, of what you were saying is, I think that's if you can get that mindset of that win-win or abundance mindset, you can, it's much easier to wish the other person well because you're not in a you're not, you haven't set up everything as a win-lose, right? Either I win, you lose, or you win, I lose. You're setting it up as an abundant, more win-win. Everybody, everybody, there's enough for everyone, right? You're exactly right. You're exactly right. That, that, that's very good. It's actually the reason why we have a no discount policy at Chili Piper. Uh, mm -hmm. So we start the conversation. We said, look, we've priced very reasonably. We can justify it based on return on investment anytime. But we're not going to get into discount because then you win, I lose. We, we got into this 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 battle where there's going to be a winner and a loser. We just don't engage in that battle. This mm -hmm. is it. This is our price. We've been fair, and hopefully uh, you'll find that uh, it's justified. Yeah, I'm sure sometimes people find that quite refreshing, do they? Yeah, and other times they find it frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they come to us and they, you know, you, you see them coming, you said, so listen, we've talked to uh, Calendly and they can do yeah. uh, half the price. You say, well, I'm sure they can do them better than that, but that's <laughs> irrelevant to us because that's not who we are. <laughs> uh, but it's good. But I think ultimately, I think people have a, you know, even if they don't agree with it, have a grudging respect for people who, um, you know, basically set out their stall and say, this is it, this is Yeah, very much so. At the end, at the, once the, the deal is closed, uh, they, 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 you're completely right. People say, you know, uh, I appreciate that you you uh, hold your ground and, and, and go with that policy. After that, yeah, I, I wish we'd do the same. And do the same. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, they'll probably say, can you teach our salespeople to do that, please? Right, right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So in the, in, in the last couple of moments here, Nicholas, what, is there anything else around empathy that you think is important for people to consider? Well, well that, that discovery of, of uh, this, 
actually theory of mind from neuroscience that, that coincided with what the author of the book called I Never Split the Difference is Chris mm -hmm. Voss. Um, so oh, yeah, I, I, um, I actually now, because I thought I recognized it, who did, because I did, uh, I did interview his son actually quite recently, who is... Uh, yeah, that's right, his works son works with him, yeah. Yeah, his son works yeah. with him, and um, yeah, they have very interesting, very interesting so, so, theories. So this tactical empathy is the same thing a theory of mine, which he has found to work so well in this uh, super challenging uh, situation, mm -hmm. the, the FBI. Is definitely something that ought to be uh, to be uh, taught uh, in the world of the cells. So uh, this is definitely, I, I see it as a, as as an important uh, improvement in our understanding of, of, of what it's all about and how, how things work. And, and I think we're going to see more and more um, uh, discussions around it. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you because I think we're seeing more and more anyway about, uh, um, you know, people discovering, you know, the power of the mind more and more. I mean, you know, mind body, you know, relation, all of that kind of stuff, you know, food, um, you know, nutrition and your mind, all of these things are connected. So I think, I think the time is coming where people are going to spend a lot more time focused on actually realizing that they have this amazing powerful capability there that's largely untapped you're right absolutely absolutely i think we should think of ourselves as uh, athletes of the mind so mm -hmm. you know i i i, I was a, a tennis um, college player and uh, right. at, the, at the time so a bit of a while back you know the top tennis players would go out to clubs and smoke cigarettes and then mm -hmm. and then go play the next day and nowadays <laughs> they like lock themselves in the, the, the compression rooms and yeah. check that the broccoli that they ate is actually at the right temperature <laughs> right the, the athlete the world of athletes has changed and people take things more seriously and i think in the world of all the athletes of the mind that we sales people are it's the same thing that's so you have to uh, the times of smoking the night before are over it's time to, yeah. to understand that our body and and our mind that together and we need to uh, take care of them uh, properly. Perfect. All right, before we go, Nicholas, uh, if you'd like to tell people a little bit more about yourself, your organization, how they can learn more about you. Yeah, sure. So I'm the co-founder of Chili Piper. I've done several uh, startups before that have existed. This one, uh, we focus on the helping companies help their buyers. So our core product is a product called Concierge. Uh, when people uh, come and submit a form, it used to be that they would get a thank you page and say, thank you, somebody's going to call you, and they would be left wondering mm -hmm. who's going to call me, and companies would lose a lot of inbound pipeline from that. So now we have a smart solution that upon form submission immediately uh, qualify the prospect, routes to the correct account executives or SDR, and either trigger the call to connect in real time or bring the calendar to book a, book a meeting. And obviously, as you can imagine, that does that uh, marvels the conversion rates. So the easiest mm -hmm. way to find out about it is to come to our website, uh, chilipiper.com, that's C-H-I-L-I-P-I-P-E-R.com, and book a meeting with us. You'll see our product in action. Excellent. Uh, it was a fantastic conversation, Nicholas. Maybe you come back and we'll dive a little deeper at a, at a later date. Um, Sounds great to me. Love it. Yeah, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline and CRM. I'll see you off for another expert insight interview really soon. Thank you.